welcome guys. Uh, it's finally spring and we just got this card out. Uh, we got a number of updates that we want to do to it and uh, I guess we'll get started. So the first thing we need to do is replace this radiator. We had a leak here and we JB welded that together and it didn't work quite as intended so we just had to get a new radiator. So, uh, and then the next thing we have to do is the CDI box. Uh, beforehand, we had it mounted here, and it was just shaking too bad on the engine, and sometimes it just straight up wouldn't work right, so we're going to have to make a tab or something to mount it somewhere wrong in this area. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is our center spool here on the um, sprocket in the center. It's just a, a farmyard sprocket, so we need to get a... A, we're going to plasma cut a um, hub to sit on the center. We're going to actually put a real motorcycle sprocket on there. Okay, so now this is the part of the main reason why we're rebuilding this. Uh, this is one of the air shocks that we had. And you can see that popped right here. So and you can see where it was rubbing too. So they're actually pretty solid shocks. But the problem is you can't really set your ride height very well. And we had to put these, uh, these limiting cables in and... You know, for how much they cost, they were actually a pretty, a pretty good option, a pretty good budget option. And what we're getting rid of as well is these Ackerman bars that aren't really needed. So they gave us the correct Ackerman angle, but where we're driving, we don't really need it. So we're going to take this, uh, get rid of this piece, and take these spindles and flip them around so now the tie rods are in the front. So we're going to have reverse Ackerman, but for what we're doing, that might actually help us a little bit better. And another thing that we want to update is this piece right here that was onto the rack. So to get proper bump steer, we had to ex basically build an extension for the rack. So now what we want to do is take the uh, this heim joint and almost go right in and into the rack right here. And what that's going to do is... It's going to take our front box and we're going to narrow it by about three inches as well. So we'll be able to put some longer A-arms in there and have longer travel as well. And pretty much from about here, from about here forward is all going to come off and get redone. One of the things that when this front end is coming off, we, we don't really quite know exactly how to do this, but we're, we're thinking about either taking these bars and leaving them as is we're coming down and um, bringing these parts up and around here. Or another option was to make a front hoop, kind of like on that red cart that we built. So the hoop would come down and around and up through here. Um, let us know what you guys think and what we should uh, put on there.
right, so these are the uh, the wheel hubs that we used. Um, they're from a Yamaha Raptor 660. So we're gonna keep these hubs and these spindles. We're just gonna get rid of this Ackerman arm on it because we don't really need that anymore. And you can see where it uh, lines up to give us that angle. Uh, both these and these um, brake calipers are all from the Yamaha 660. So we're gonna keep all that stuff, just get rid of those arms. And then this is what we used on the master cylinder to set our bias on the front to rear brakes. You can see we just had a small difference on, I believe it was the front side. So the, to put more pressure on the front brakes. Um, we got our pedals here. These are gonna get redone. Yeah, these are just junk. They, uh, we got the plasma cutter now, so they're gonna be way better than this. These are the A-arm. Uh, this is the bottom one, and this is the top. So they make a pair, and the reason why this bottom one's curved and a little bit longer is, is so we can keep the proper uh, kingpin angle. We're gonna get rid of these and replace them with bigger ball joints. But we are going to keep these heim joints because they still seem to be pretty good. But you could definitely tell that these are wore out. This is our steering column. This is also junk. Uh, the we did have this U joint up here, but it was just the U joint and then this bearing here. So there was only one point to support. So it was pretty rattly and it had a lot of slop in the steering. Now these are our shocks. Obviously, the one is not an air shock because the air shock exploded while we were riding, and we had to put some. We had to find something just to be able to transport the thing and not have it dragging on the ground. Um, the air shock here is actually a pretty solid shock for what they cost. So eye to eye on this particular one will be about 17 inches and then when it's compressed it'll be about 10 and a half so you get quite a bit a lot or quite a lot of travel for only having to pay about $30 a piece for those and then on our rack we're going to keep the rack but we're going to get rid of this rack extension because we're actually going to narrow the front end so we can get longer a arms and the tie rods we have here, uh, we haven't figured out what exactly we're going to do with these or not, if we're going to keep them. Or the the tie rods are going to have to get longer, obviously, but we haven't decided if we're going to keep these joints or not, or if we're going to switch to something else. Alright, so just a reminder, we need some help on deciding if we want to take these hoops and leave them at the angle that they are or probably bring them down to somewhere in here and have the front end come up like this more instead of a swooping angle. We kind of have an idea on how we're gonna attach the A-arms, but we were looking for ideas uh, from you guys. So with that said, uh, appreciate you watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And comment what you think we should do with these.